So this is where I am after about an hour of painting. Um, pretty far along, actually. I mean, it looks like something. It doesn't quite look like the, the original. And you have to realize, too, I'm working from a copy from a book of a photograph of the original. So it's going, always going to be approximate. And I'm also not really trying to completely replicate the product. I'm trying to imitate Raphael's process, trying to paint the way I think he painted, at the speed he painted. And so the results aren't going to look exactly like the original, but they will be done in the same spirit and with the same method and, and hopefully with a fairly convincing effect. So here we are, been working fast and furious. Um, it's only been a couple of hours, but I'm essentially done, I think. Um, I've gotten something that, for me, you know, is a reasonable approximation of Raphael's Heraclitus, um, AKA Michelangelo. Uh, I've saved for the end some things that I'm gonna do that uh, just to show you what, you know, what I think Raphael was doing that, that also have something to do with the fresco technique. Um, because he, he uh, chopped away into the stairs and carved out a space for the head of Michelangelo, in order to make it look like that isn't what he did, he actually did a little bit of painting of some, you know, straggly strands of hair on top of the already dry plaster of the stairs. And what that does is actually, you know, kind of blur the distinction of where, you know, one giornata ends and the other. He, he's trying to hide the giornatas, essentially. And it, and it also gives Michelangelo's hair this kind of great, wispy, um, slightly straggly kind of quality. Um, so I've, I've done that at the end, like he would have done it probably, with a little bit of um, pigment and some water with lime in it. So it has a little bit of lime that's gonna make it bond to the, um, to the wall behind. And that's, that's known as mezzo fresco, half fresco. It's half fresh. It's using lime, but on already dry plaster. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take out my handy Swiss Army knife, which Raphael didn't have, but he had a knife of some kind. And I am going to carve away at the end of my giornata in a place that is, corresponds to essentially where Raphael stopped his giornata. And I'm going to create a beveled edge a, a kind of an angled chamfered edge at the edge of the plaster, with a, which I can do when it, the plaster is fresh as it is right now still. So I want to do this on the day that I paint. I don't want to wait another day because it'll be hard and crumbly then. I'm going to carve away and create a nice, clean, crisp edge that I can then fill in with another day's giornata if I wanted to do that, if I were Raphael trying to finish this figure. Um, I'm not going to finish it because I'm going to leave it carved away so that the Sinope underneath is evident and that the, the panel then will sort of explain the fresco process. So I hope this has given you a good overview of the kind of an arc of a fresco painter's day. Uh, I've done it all myself, you know, probably at the end of the day, Raphael would not be the one carving away. So he'd have one of his assistants do it. He also didn't do his own plastering like I did. So he, you know, he, he just showed up with his brushes and his pigments and started painting and, and he didn't even chance transfer the cartoon. Almost certainly that was also done by his assistant. So, um, but what you've seen is the arc of the, uh, a fresco painting day and that full giornata from mixing the plaster, troweling it on, transferring the cartoon, blocking in the painting, working to the final details and finally carving away at the end of the giornata is what happened for Raphael over the course of his great fresco of the School of Athens uh, at least 54 times.